Hey man cave-ins, this is Bob from the Bob's End Scale Man Cave and today we have a review of a brand new locomotive from Scaletrains.com the C39-8 this one happens to be Norfolk Southern's Phase 2 number 8577 so let's go take a look at this fine locomotive <laughs> Okay, this does come with an operator's manual that has all the information inside about uh, how to clean it and remove the shell and DCC operations, all the functions and so forth and how to program some CVs and change the horns and all those good things. I'm going to set that aside, of course. And let's take a look at the model itself. Okay, here's a really close-up view of all those details. Right here in high def. You can see those windshield wipers on the windows. Oh, I, first time I didn't notice that, but you see the chain right there on the front walkway, right in front of that horse. You can see that right on the handrail. You can see the detail on these trucks and the right light. You can see all the little handles on all the panel doors and on the grill detail and uh, the glass in the windshields and the side windows. You can see the, the chair inside there. See, there's other uh, control panels inside the the cab. And looks like a front brake wheel right up there. Let's see how close we can get here to see if we can read. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to read the actual lettering on the. Uh, safety labels there, but you can see the NW underneath 8577. It's almost like you really could read all these things if you've got a good high-powered magnifying glass. It almost looks like you can read the label on the gas tank it looks like there's some words there, but it's really hard to see. Uh, you can see the airlines right there next to the trucks. Uh, so brake chains on this side here. There hose air tanks right there. Looks like the sanding hoses for the back wheels are right there. You can see those. Great, great detail. And you got the top. Let's take a look at the back. See all that detail. The grab irons climbing up the back. Didn't see those before. My eyes must be going bad. So I have this zoomed in view here so I can see things that I didn't see before. Definitely a great looking model. Let's see how it runs.
Okay, this weighs 3.7 ounces or 106 grams. Okay, press F8 to do startup. Okay, so now that's started up. Let's try the bell. And F2, the horn. Now F3 is a coupler crash. F9 is a drive hold. That's a neat little feature. Uh, F10 is an independent brake. I think you only hear that when it's moving. F11 is a manual radiator fan. There's the fan sound right there. There's F12 is a headlight dimmer, F13 is an air dryer, and uh, let's see, there's an air dryer on shutdown option for F16, uh, F17 is a brake set and brake release. Uh, F-18, a sanding valve. Uh, F-19 is a short air let off. And 20 is a compressor. Compressor. So let's see how it runs. Well, one thing I've noticed is that the locomotive is in reverse. It actually goes forward. And put it in forward. It goes in reverse. So I'll have to look into reprogramming the direction. But we'll just work with that. So let's start with a one speed step. Two speed steps. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down to stop. It's got pretty good slow motion control. Um, really surprised. Uh, it was really moving slow at all these uh, low speed steps. Let's uh, speed it up real quick. Jump up to 30, uh, 40, and it takes off and gradually builds up speed to that speed. 
And when you hit the zero, it has momentum to slow down. Let's take a look at that in reverse. I'm at 50 right now. Stop. Zero speed steps. And it has some momentum. Very good uh, motor control. Okay, let's take a look at the headlight. And turn the headlight on. Slowly generates up. And goes off. Turn it on. You hit F12. Uh, Makes it dimmer. As you can see, it may a little bit dimmer. And turn it back brighter. And then here's the rear headlight, or tail light actually. And let's see. Option 12 also dims that one as well. Okay, we're going to do a Mankavian pull test. Uh, the Micromark meter did not even register any uh, pulling power whatsoever. Uh, it's kind of typical with M scale because it's not real heavy enough to actually make a good uh, pull for especially something of uh, these like this size. So I've got 14 uh, scale trains cars, everything that I have scale trains, and I also have the rest of these are intermodal cars with uh, loads in them, scale trains loads and various company loads. But I have a total of 25 cars, so we're going to pull this up the helix and see how far it gets. Okay. So far so good, it's pulling all 25 of these. Okay, it looks like it's uh, done pulling. It didn't get very far with all this load on it. So I'm going to take about half of these off and only have the scale trains ones on there and see how it goes. Okay, all we have now is the scale trains cars. That's only 14 cars, so let's see how it goes. Pulling these cars up. I'm at 40 speed steps. And the wheel is slipping. So there it stops. It's not a very good pull up these hills. I think it has something to do with the weight. But it does pull pretty good on flat uh, ground. Okay, I took two cars off. Now I only have 12. Wheels are slipping still a little bit, but it's pulling even better. So probably the max would be about 10 of those hoppers without any wheel slip. I have the 
speed step up to 50. If we get some momentum going up at 2% grade, it probably goes a lot easier. Well, man, Cavens, that's been my review of this C39-8 from ScaleTrains.com. It's a uh, it's a great locomotive. Uh, it highly detailed, all the paint, the colors, the the decals, all the all those little tiny details with uh, the radiator grills and sunshades and mirrors, everything that you would expect in an HO scale. You see here in this N scale version. It uh, sounds great, it pulls pretty well, and it, uh, I, think, I think you got a touchdown on this again. You know, it, it's great. And uh, I always look forward to new things from Scale Trains, and uh, they did not disappoint. I did have to uh, reprogram the road number just to clear up some of the DCC issues. When I got it, the reverse and forward were kind of backwards on the controller, and I don't know if that was something that got programmed when they were uh, pre-programming the road number, but uh, something was a little weird off and uh, it was an easy fix. So everything's great now and uh, we're going to leave you with a run by and you know if you like what you saw here give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, consider subscribing and as always Mancavians, happy model railroading and you stay off those tracks. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Check out these videos over here. Also click on the links down below to follow me on social media. And leave a comment. Tell me what you liked. And as always, Mancavians, happy model railroading and stay off those tracks. Bye.